Hey, this is Rob, and I'm just going to show you a little bit about how to deal with physical materials in Fusion 360. In my case, what I'm really interested in is taking this mold that I'm carving out of machinable wax using a CNC milling machine, and then uh, simulating with a boundary fill, and I'm not going to show that necessarily, but here's the, uh, f the, the result of using that mold. I'd pour silicone into this void, and I'd end up with this silicone mold which I'll then pour materials into afterward. So um, this is part of my digital fabrication class, and, and so all of my students are familiar with what I'm talking about. And then uh, what I'm really interested in knowing is how much material I need to mix up, uh, how much silicone I need to mix to pour the right amount of material in here. Now this is very small, but if it were bigger, it would really be important to know how much material I need to purchase. And uh, I want to mix just enough or a little bit over. If I have too little mixed and I don't fill my mold, that's a really big problem. And if I bought too much, uh, that's just expensive. I may end up with a pail half full of um, silicone that isn't useful for anything. So it's you want to kind of get it uh, right on. So right now I can right click on this and hit Properties. And you'll see that the physical material is set to steel and it has an appearance associated with it that's steel satin. Those are the defaults for Fusion 360. The volume is correct, so this is showing up as about three cubic centimeters of volume. Uh, if the units weren't right and I wanted cubic inches or something, I could change my units here and this number will uh, change accordingly. So the, the mass is here, this is the weight in grams, but that's only correct if the physical material is steel. I'm using this product called Moldmax 60 from SmoothOn, and uh, I could tell you that this density, which is um, how Fusion 360 determines the mass, basically looks at the volume of this whole thing, looks at its density, and then it can calculate mass really easily. So the density of steel is clearly going to be more than uh, Moldmax 60, which is silicone rubber. So 7.85 grams per cubic centimeter is how heavy the um, how dense the steel is, and that makes for a heavier object. So if I look at the product overview for uh, SmoothOn's MoldMax 60, I can see there's a specific gravity listed here that says 1.45 grams per cubic centimeter is the, uh, the density, basically. Specific volume is kind of a, a, it's the same number in different terms. So what I'm really interested in is changing the density of this particular material we're changing to a material that matches more the qualities of my um, silicone. I'll hit OK and just right click and choose physical material. I don't really care too much about the appearance, although I could change that here by right clicking and choosing appearances. That's really if I want to render this on screen, um, not so important for the kinds of calculations we're doing. So right now it's steel. You can see that and for whatever reason I have two of them here, but one of those is being used to, to uh, model this product and then or this body and um, what I'm interested in is switching under plastic. I know there's a s rubber silicone, so I'll drag that over. And um, if I click on this, double click on this, it actually shows me what the density is. So 1.25 grams per cubic centimeter. That's not quite the same as the um, MoldMax 60. So this is probably like for an average silicone rubber, maybe an average uh, hardness or density. So I'm going to change this to uh, to actually be the silicone rubber that I'm using. So I'll just change its name to MoldMax 60 silicone rubber and I'll change the density to 1.45 grams per cubic centimeter. And I'll also hit advanced because uh, there's one other detail that I'd like to change which is, uh, you know, I could, I could add the URL here. Uh, I could add uh, SmoothOn as the manufacturer. One thing, though, that I'm interested in is actually just changing the color so it looks a little more like the actual material I have. So it's this kind of dark red. I'll hit OK. And it uh, doesn't seem to have changed the color. Let me try that again. Hit Advanced. Dark red. Hit OK. OK, worked that time. So uh, <clears throat> I'll right click and I can add to favorites. And now, actually, the next time I go into Fusion 360 and create a new design, I'll see this listed under my favorites. If I don't do that, I think it'll just stick within this particular design and it'll still be here the next time I open this design, but I may not be able to reuse it for other uh, projects. So it's kind of nice to be able to put it in favorites. Unfortunately, I don't think favorites stick around with your profile. So if you went to another computer, I don't think your favorites, your, your new material will be here. 
but on this computer I should be able to see it again. So uh, if I double click again, there it is, 1.45 grams, and I'll hit close. I'll right click on this body again and hit properties. And I could see that uh, the mass for this particular object is 4.4202 grams. That's how much material I need. This particular product is mixed 100 to 3, uh, 100 parts A to 3 parts B. So um, you can imagine this is, this is too small of an object. Uh, I'd need a very accurate scale to get just three parts of this measured out accurately. So I'd need to be uh, making more than just this. And um, it works fine for our class because we have lots of objects to make. So we'll add all the volumes together and then calculate how much of each part we need to weigh out. Uh, that calculation is, um, well, actually, I'll show it right here. So uh, basically, we know that there are 103 parts of MoldMax 60 total. So 100 parts of A and 3 parts of B, so that's 103 parts. So we basically have this formula, and we can determine the, uh, the missing variable here for part B to find out part B. We could just multiply across and then divide by the other number. So that gives us how much we need of part B. And we can do the same thing for part A. So that's how you could calculate it really quickly. Uh, we have a handout in class where we'll go over this together and figure it out. Uh, in class. But uh, for anyone else, hopefully this is useful. And um, that's about it. Thanks.